Hey guys, welcome back to Computer Caveman. Yes, uh, after a long wait, I am finally ready with my 486 uh, Vessel Waco bus build. I am really happy that you are here and I will do my best to make one very good video. I will waste no more time and we'll start with fixing the front panel on Fast Forward. I'm a fire starter, twisted fire starter. One quick remark guys before I fire hazard the whole place. I find my soldering best at 360 degrees Celsius. And to check what I've done, I need uh, three hands and at least uh, three crocodile holders or whatever those clamps are called. Uh, okay, I will now press uh, those two probes here and I will hold them with my one hand and with the other I'm gonna press this button. And this beeping noise uh, is telling us that everything with our joints is okay, so I'm gonna move on. Ooh, I tore this apart long ago. I can't remember what was where. I should have taken some photos. Uh, machete improvise. A good way to get a clue what was where is to count the number of screws needed. I need two screws here and they're probably identical. And by the way the hole is drilled, I know that this is a screw of that type so I'm just gonna as I say improvise take a look around and make everything as It is now time to attach the speaker to the case. Pretty decent one and I also like the way it is attached to the case. Uh, there are places for four screws but only two are used as you can see by the marks. Do not mount the front panel yet uh, because first we need to attach uh, this power switch and if you remember my 386 episode, uh, just uh, hook this up to the power supply right or your fuses will pop and your neighborhood may become a dark place to live. Following now guys some caveman logic, so hold to your seats. As I told you we are not mounting the front panel yet because we need to first mount the power switch. And we are not mounting the power switch yet because we need to connect it properly to the power supply. But no, we are not going to mount the power supply either because we want to mount the motherboard first. Less cables and stuff inside, easier to negotiate your way through the case. Now this case has those arrow plastic thingies to attach the motherboard to the backplane. Not the best way to attach a board, I prefer screws, but it will do. Uh, just be careful not to break them cause they are hard to find. Uh, you should also place uh, those plastic spacers on the board for every missing one on the case side, because when you install peripetal cards the board will bend and it will touch the back plane and you don't want that. I am now ready to attach uh, the board. As I told you, I have mounted those uh, plastic spacers. They will prevent uh, the board from touching the backplane and creating a short circuit when subjected to force. Uh, what else? Uh, this uh, backplane itself is not removable. 
Uh, this is inconvenient because it's a more harder that way to mount the board and those uh, aero plastic holders they do not provide uh, grounding so all grounding will go through the peripetal cards to the case uh, with that said let's do this come on no touchy carefully uh, cash touching stuff Come on, board. I usually do not recommend lifting your board uh, through the random access memory. Now, when all those holes align, you can just press gently your board until you hear a click. There we go. And we are good to go. I have been a stupid, stupid caveman guy, so yes, I did connect my power switch to my power supply and yes, this is the correct sequence for this switch. Uh, there is a general rule, uh, lighter ones uh, go together, darker ones uh, go together, uh, but this of course depends on the switch, so better check uh, with a multimeter. With the button pressed, uh, the couple should have a direct connection, a brown connected to black, and blue connected uh, to white. Uh, this is how it goes. Uh, then I saw those uh, cut wires and this is absurd. I cannot continue until I solder new Molex power connectors uh, and we're gonna do this like pros. So back to soldering. Don't forget safety. Smoking. I have secured the power supply with uh, four hard drive screws. Uh, do not uh, tighten them one by one. Uh, tighten them only after you have uh, installed them all. Otherwise, your mounting holes uh, might uh, mismatch, and then you will have to untighten the ones you already did and do it all over again. So do it after all screws have been placed and you will have no problems. I am ready, it is uh, secured firmly in place. Uh, do not over tighten excessively. Uh, power supplies uh, do not usually escape from the case by themselves. And you know the drill from my 386 build video. A uh, red to red means that always do it black to black. After I got rid of all the cables that were obstructing my view to this magnificent board, I am ready to install my peripetals. I will start with this glorious SVGA VESA S3 graphics card. After I benchmark it later, I will install more memory into those two slots and see if this helps to boost its performance. If you need more information about the components I am using in my video today, just check up my 486 Vessel Local Bus Parts video. I will continue with the Vessel Local Bus Input Output Controller. Quite a big upgrade from the controller I had prepared. This one much, much better. Especially in the disk controller part here. 32 bit goodness. I will place this as higher as I can because all the data cables except the one for the CD-ROM will be hooked to this baby. Last but not least, look at this beauty, classical creative, huge, green and awesome, kinda like Hulk. Uh, the 4-speed Mitsumi CD-ROM will be connected to it, two cables, one for the interface here and one for the analog CD audio. Before I install all my cards at the bottom of the case, 
to leave space for my CD-ROMs and hard drives and cables. Uh, just a little remark, uh, the red painted wire, as you remember from my previous episodes, shows us where pin 1 is. After we have determined where pin 1 is on the cable, on the controller, there is a label 1 here. We're gonna match it with the red wire of the cable. Jukosha. Wherever the hell Jukosha means. So many cables. This is going to be a nightmare to cable manage. I will now install the front panel and the power switch, but because I don't want to get you bored, I'm gonna do it in fast forward. Whoa, that was tricky, but let's continue. I am going to use this hard drive, guys. Uh, 853 megabytes, Western Digital Caviar 2850. Uh, you can find more info about it from a Lucky Score video I made some time ago. Uh, I have no idea what's on it. Uh, we will see when I power the beast on. Floppy disk drive standard uh, three and a half inch 1.44 megabytes in capacity made by Mitsumi. Nothing fancy today, but back then cutting edge. And speaking of cutting edge, this four speed uh, CD ROM drive again made by Mitsumi. That was the multimedia king back in the day. I will now mount and fasten everything and then I will sort the cables. As usually, remember to line up your floppies and CD-ROMs to the front panel, otherwise it would be ugly. I have barely managed to secure the drive uh, from uh, this side, took me like uh, 10 minutes, definitely not the best case to work with, still I have done it and now it's time to secure the floppy and the CD-ROM. And the floppy again is a little tricky, but much easier than the hard drive. We have come to my least favorite part of the job, guys, cable managing this madness. Wish me luck. And I'm gonna start with the CD-ROM and I'm gonna use this cable, which is named Junkosha. Probably comes from Junk, have no idea.
remember how I told you usually uh, the signaling wire the red one that uh, shows us where pin 1 is is from the power supply not always though And I should have connected my front panel LEDs first. Now it is going to be harder. Anyway, not too much of a problem. Gonna do it now. As I told you before, the cover line is the positive one. If the LEDs are not lit, just turn the connector around. Information on where to connect them on the board, either in the board's menu or search for labels printed on the PCB. Welcome back guys, uh, this was honestly the hardest computer I have cable managed for years. It uh, took me like half an hour until I did it in a way that I like. I had to place my peripetals differently because the Creative's uh, CD-ROM interface cable was bending my input-output controller, which is uh, no need to tell you not good at all. There is absolutely no way for more big ISA or VESA cards to be installed on the upper slots. Uh, they will collide either with the CPU's heatsink or with the hard drive and floppy. I have also installed the CD-ROM analog audio cable. Uh, you can see it, it goes from the sound card to the CD-ROM. Anyway, I like it how it looks. I will reposition my camera and check if the monster lives. Camera, lights, fingers crossed, let's do it. Hard drive is pulling. I have picture on display and the PC speaker beat. I have entered the system utility. As you can see, my megahertz display is showing 10. I have obviously misconfigured it. Should have checked it before, but I was too sure, and the universe punishes me. Guys, you know how it goes. Uh, there will be a 486 Vessel Walker but software video coming soon. And if you liked what you saw, you can give me a thumbs up or even subscribe. Also, I would be happy to reply if you have any questions. Uh, what else? Uh, lucky score coming in a couple of days. I have found a very interesting motherboard, so stay tuned. As always, it was my pleasure, Computer Caveman, over and out. Just listen to this unbearable noise, guys. Old school, none of this modern silent rubbish.